Last year, we had a wonderful culminating concert called The Immigrants. And we took that occasion to go out and involve the community, to really engage the community in the wonderfully rich cultural heritage of this region. This year, we have a concert, The Armed Man, A Mass for Peace. And it is a stirring, dramatic, poignant piece that really calls for reconciliation. It talks about the horrors of war, but it also speaks to reconciliation as a way towards peace. We thought that would be a wonderful topic, given the deep divides in society today, to reach out and see if there was interest in the community, again, to do this kind of multi-event thematic approach culminating in the concert. The interest was overwhelming. We formed an advisory committee of leaders from across the community, education, arts, culture, media, television, radio, all the religious community. They were all interested and the theme became reconciliation and peace. When you think of composers that you want to perform with a choir like Albany Pro Musica, uh, Carl Jenkins is a logical uh, choice. Uh, Carl Jenkins at age 72, I think is his age right now, is one of the most performed living composers right now. So uh, we, you always want to program him, but also because his music is, is quite special. Uh, he uses elements from different cultures, um, uh, he draws from poetry that reflects the diversity of this world in which we live. So it's a piece that, that uh, really um, applies to the times that we're living. You want to be relevant with your art, in this case with the Kota art, and classical music by definition is always relevant because it transcends in the case of this particular music, uh, nothing more relevant than a call for peace, which is what it is. The armed man is a mass for peace. Um, ten of one. Did I ask you to sing with the alto on that entrance? All right, let's see if we can balance this. So let me hear sopranos and altos, those first two measures, 73, one, two, three, go. Is low for you, so it's hard to project. There's also a poster exhibit that's coming through the community called Humanize, Don't Militarize, and it's put together by the American Friends Society, and it's going to be at many of these different venues as these uh, uh, programs uh, go on. Uh, people will be able to see that as they go to some of the performances. This piece um, was written in 1999, and, uh, and it, was, it was premiered on the year 2000. And it was commissioned to, to celebrate the millennium, right, the change into the millennium. So the composer chose to reflect on the fact that the previous century was perhaps uh, the most destructive century in human history. So he's reflecting on, on that. And in fact, at the time he wrote it, uh, we were in the, in the midst of the Kosovo conflict and he dedicated a work to the Kosovo conflict. Now, something that is interesting is that this is a mass and you typically think of the Roman Catholic mass, which many composers have settings, musical settings for it. But it's very interesting that in this case, he, the composer uses only four movements of the Roman Catholic Mass. And this is a work with 13 movements. And all the other movements uh, feature music from different parts of the world. It features poetry uh, from a diversity of poets. It features secular texts. So again, it's, it's, it's a trademark of this composer that is, is speaking to a diversity of people, to the citizens of the world. 
For instance, the first movement is called the Armand. It is written in French, and it is actually based on a 15th century uh, French uh, uh, folk song. And um, it's, it's very exuberant with the flutes starting with. And you have the percussion. So everybody is preparing for war. And, uh, and listen to what, what, uh, what the poetry says. The armed man is to be feared everywhere it has been decreed that every man, every man should arm himself. So in essence, it's a joyful call to arm. Because this, this uh, work uh, takes us from the time in which people are preparing for war to the conflict and then what happens during and after the conflict. One, uh. This work, The Armed Man, conveys not only the emotion of the terror of war that is what this is really about. This is about scaring you away from war. But it also conveys some of the factual aspects of what it is that drives us to that. In some of the throbbing of the music, you hear, you can almost sense the, the blood rising in people as they move toward combat. Um, that emotional impact is hard for a writer to convey. Great writers can, poets maybe. Uh, but uh, when you add the music, when you add a powerful piece like this, you get an emotional argument, not just a factual argument. There are points where the voices are in effect the fanfare, where you can almost hear the trumpets blaring before the troops charge. And that is potent. It's fun to perform. For somebody who deals all the time, as I do in my work, with the sort of precision of making words come together, the power of this music is a great and wonderful feeling. You know, the great thing about singing, I, I almost pursued a career in music. I didn't, I went into journalism, but what drew me to music was, it was the only place in my life where I had the spiritual, the intellectual, the physical all coming together at once. And that's what great choral music can do. Standing on this stage, singing this music with this amazing power, uh, with the emotional impact that ha it has, talking about man's tendency toward combat and what could be instead our drive toward peace. That is an emotionally powerful experience and I'm just really grateful to be able to have a hand in it. The Kyrie is usually the first movement in the Mass, in a, in a regular Mass. In this case, it's the third movement of this work. Um, something interesting, I think, or beautiful about this is that I, I believe with this Kyrie, people begin to feel the melancholy of, of, of bad things that are about to happen uh, when we go to war. And here's this beautiful melody. Very beautiful Kyrie, uh, and and from the Kyrie, then the composer goes to to a movement that is called uh, the fourth movement. It's called "Save Me from Bloody Men." In this case, of course, it's talking about murderous men, and um, and um, here he has the men only in the choir singing in a Gregorian chant style singing, be merciful unto me, O God, right? This one is based on Psalm 56 and 59, where the, where the psalmist is basically calling on God to be merciful. Uh, and um, at the end, there's a huge 
explosion from the percussion that is basically anticipating that something bad is about to happen and maybe your prayer will not keep you away from that. So, so people are just calling their friends and everybody, let's come, let's go together, let's go to war. And then when the sanctus come, we're just ready, almost ready to enter the battle. And we're anticipating with excitement, but also with a little bit of fear. Oh my goodness, what is it that is really going to happen? So how do we project that? Well, let's see. Now. You know, one of the really exciting things is that joining Albany Pro Musica in this performance will be Capital District Youth Chorale, CDYC. This is a great group of high quality uh, young musicians, uh, high schoolers, most of them now, who are engaged in musical performance at a level above people their age usually are able to attain. And uh, we're really thrilled to be able to do this because the uh, music education is an important part of the mission of Alme Pro Musica. And we, who are members of uh, APM, remember when we were these young people learning to perform music, uh, the thrill of being in a significant performance like this is just uh, something that is amazing for a young musician. It's great. The music is really thrilling all the way through, even through those depressing uh, acts of war. But what happens with Movement 10 is the turning point. And if we wouldn't have this turning point, it, I, I would argue that um, you have to think it twice before presenting this, war, this work. But in this case, it's a turning point for hope for peace. And this comes with the Agnus Day. The Agnus Day, which comes from the Mass, of course, Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, uh, have mercy on us, is when we're reflecting on what we have done. But then it comes with very beautiful music that is one of the icons of this work. And you're going to hear the choir singing one of the most lyric lines of this, the most beautiful lines of this piece. It's just so beautiful. So this composer has this great ability to go from this drama of the war into touching the heart of the whole audience with these very sensitive, uh, delicate, beautiful lines. The composer chooses to finish this work with a movement called Better is Peace. This is the whole message. Better is peace. It's a better way to live. So this is what he does. It is a movement with exuberant joy. It has the flutes just going crazy uh, with, with exuberance uh, motifs. And then uh, the choir is singing. Very interesting because he uses the same motif from the first movement calling to war, which was on a minor scale and this time he changes to major so it's brighter it's happier and this is what he uses to say better is peace but then um, here's another part of this piece that makes it uh, really very special in the middle of this uh, the, uh, the composer uses the, the text from the poet uh, uh, Tennyson, which is a New Year's poem, New Year's poem, that says, 
Ring out the thousand wars, wars of old. Ring in the thousand years of peace. And that's the message behind this piece. And it's again exuberant. <laughs> is saying ring, ring, ring. Um, and then you would think that uh, if, if, if we are to finish a work as dramatic like this on that high note, perhaps there's something missing. And, and I think here's where you see the brilliance of this composer. Because it doesn't matter if on what side of the war you are, it doesn't matter if, if you're in the losing or the winning side, it doesn't matter if there was not many casualties, whatever it is, it is still a tragedy, isn't it? So a moment of reflection and perhaps a, a moment to, to look beyond ourselves uh, is important. And in this case, he, 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 the composer chooses to finish with the choir a cappella, the orchestra is silent. And, and the prayer is, God shall wipe away all tears, and there shall be no more death. And that's how the work finishes. The Armed Man, performed by Albany Pro Musica with the Capital District Youth Chorale and the Orchestra Pro Musica, will be at the MPAC Media and Performing Arts Center at RPI this Saturday, May 6th at 7.30 p.m.